Hello, everyone, and welcome to our very last session of our week-long virtual open house. To introduce myself, my name is Kelly Otis, and I am the Director for Admissions, and the session that you are here for today is the overview of admissions and financial aid. So to give you a layout, we will start with an admissions overview. We will then move on to a financial aid overview and some information on payment plans, and then we will have a Q&A session at the very end. So as we're going through our presentations this evening, if you have any questions, feel free to submit them to us. There is a control panel on the right-hand side, and there should be an area where you can submit questions. Feel free to do that throughout the session, and I will be reading them at the very end when we do our Q&A panel. Just so you know, this session is being recorded and will be available next week on our website, harford.edu slash learn more. All of the sessions have been recorded this week, so you'll be able to see all of them if you weren't able to attend them live during this week. Also on that website, that harford.edu slash learn more, you can get more information about admissions, financial aid, programming. It is a great resource for students who are just starting out and need to learn more about Harford Community College. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Jen Starkey, who is our Assistant Director for Admissions, to talk to us about the admissions overview. Jen, it's all yours. Okay. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kelly. So my name is Jennifer Starkey. I'm the Assistant Director of Admissions at Harford Community College. So tonight we'll be discussing the steps needed to get you ready to register for classes. So the enrollment steps have altered slightly, as you can imagine, in response to the COVID-19 closure. So during this time, we are not able to receive phone calls, faxes, or even standard mail to the campus since we're all working from home. In response, we will work directly with students to upload necessary enrollment documents directly to their accounts. In addition, the Office of Admissions is available to assist via email and also using Microsoft Teams to make appointments to speak with prospective students and their families. You can find the request form to make an appointment on the admissions page on the college's website. So the first step for every prospective student is to apply to the college. And you can do so by clicking on apply at the top of the college's webpage at harford.edu. When your application has been received and accepted, you'll receive a confirmation email, which will include the steps that we'll review this evening, as well as an email that includes your student ID and your online credentials. This initial communication will be sent to the personal email you provide in your application. So when you apply, you'll choose the student type that best describes your academic goals at the college. So we have a few student types, and these all have specific enrollment steps in order to get the student registered. And again, you'll be sent an email with a reminder telling you these steps. So in case you're not able to view this presentation later, you can also contact us as well, or just look at the email that we send you with the enrollment steps in order to get started. So our student types are a dual enrolled student, and that's a student that is taking classes at HCC while still in high school. A new student, so that's going to be a student that has graduated from high school at the time that HCC classes begin. So if you are graduating high school, then if you're applying for the fall, you'll be a new student to the college. We also have transfer or graduate transfer students. So these are students who have attended another college or university and are going to transfer the credits to HCC to receive a degree. So if you um, have attended another college or university and haven't received your degree yet, you'll apply as a transfer student. If you have a degree, then you apply as a graduate transfer student. The next one is a visiting student. And that's a student that's registering for a class or two so typically over the winter or summer semesters, and the intention is to transfer the class back to their home college or university. We also have undeclared graduate transfer students. So these are students who have graduated from a college or university, um, but they're taking classes for personal enrichment or even career enrichment. So if that's your intention, please apply as undeclared as your major when you apply as a graduate transfer student. 
And finally, readmit students. And these are students who have attended HCC previously, but didn't complete their degree, so they're coming back to HCC to do so. So after you apply, you can actually begin to gather the documents that are needed to get you registered. And like I mentioned previously, each student type has specific requirements. So dual enrolled students, these are students that are gonna be taking classes at HCC while they are still in high school, will need to submit the following. The first is a high school transcript, and that can be requested via Naviance still. Even though we're not receiving mail to the college, you can request the electronic Naviance transcript to be sent to us, or even a screenshot as well. If that's the case and you need the screenshot sent to us, you can go ahead and email it to admissions at harper.edu. So after submitting the transcript, please contact admissions staff at admissions at harper.edu. And what you wanna do is actually list the courses you wish to take. And we'll let you know if you need to submit additional test scores to meet any class prerequisites. If you are receiving a tuition waiver from HCPS, please know that you can also scan that to our cashier's office at cashier at harford.edu. And also one big thing is we would like you to confirm with your high school counseling office if the classes you are taking will count for high school graduation requirements. We want to make sure that you're taking the right classes, especially as a dual enrolled student, if they are meeting those high school requirements. New students, so these students that are going to graduate in 2020 and will start in the fall semester, what you're going to need to do is kind of like dual enrolled students, submit a high school transcript and qualifying test scores for English and math. So the college accepts various assessments to place students into classes. These can include a 480 in SAT, evidence-based reading and writing, and a 530 in and math, a score of four or higher in Park English 10 or 11, and Park Algebra 2, a 3.0 unweighted cumulative high school GPA up to the end of the junior year, a grade of C or higher in HCC math if you're taking it in participating high schools. In addition, we can also use international baccalaureate credits if you're attending Edgewood High School and AP scores. So you can see there are various ways to meet the qualifying scores for college level classes at the college. So that's why it's really important that you send us your high school transcript and all test scores prior to registering. Your academic advisor will use this information to assist you in choosing classes based on your scores and your academic plan. So if you have not met the qualifying scores that are needed, you can take our academic skills assessment, which is called the AccuPlacer. We offer test dates throughout the academic year at local high schools, as well as on campus. But obviously during this closure, we had to think about how we can offer that test to our students during this time. So it is available online. And if you do need to take it, just contact admissions staff at admissions at harper.edu, and we'll send you the link to sign up in order to schedule a time to take the AccuPlacer. So a little bit more about this AccuPlacer. It is a computer adaptive test that consists of reading comprehension, sentence skills, as well as math. While the test is untimed, please allow up to two hours to complete all three sections of it. <clears throat> Students are allowed to take um, the AccuPlacer for two free attempts. The third and additional attempts will actually cost $25. If you attended the AccuPlacer in your junior year of high school, you'll actually be allowed two additional free attempts during your senior year. Test preparation for the AccuPlacer can be found on the College Board site, as well as Harford's Test Center page. So next we'll move on to the transfer and graduate transfer students. So again, these are students that attended another college or university and wanna transfer credits back to Harford in order to complete a degree with us. So these students will need to submit a college transcript. However, if your school is not able to send one to us electronically, you can actually scan an unofficial one over to us at admissions at harper.edu. However, there are a lot of schools that can offer electronic transcripts to be sent to us. If that's the case and they can, please have it sent to transcripts at harper.edu. So again, unofficial college transcripts to admissions at harper.edu and official 
visiting, visiting students. Again, these are the students that are taking a class or two at Harvard to help fulfill credits at their home college or university. So prior to registering, please ensure that the classes that you're going to take at Harvard will transfer back to the, your home college university and will meet the requirements for your major. And after applying as a visiting student, you're ready to register. We'll send an email with the enrollment steps, but you can also contact us at admissions at harford.edu for any additional assistance. If you're an undeclared graduate transfer student, you'll just need to submit unofficial proof of your college degree to admissions at harford.edu. Some examples include an unofficial transcript, photo of your degree, or even an alumni card. Readmit students, so those are ones who HCC and are returning, you're encouraged to contact the Office of Admissions to confirm that your test scores are still valid. So after you've applied and contacted our office, we'll confirm that you have everything on file before you register. Degree-seeking students will be referred to Advising, Career and Transfer Services, and you'll speak with a designated advisor that's based on your major. Your academic advisor can assist you during the class schedule um, process with a virtual academic session. So we can still meet with you even during this closure. In addition to making sure you're on track to completing your degree, it can also provide guidance with transferring to a four-year college. Degree-seeking students can also sign up for an orientation session during this academic session. Orientation will be held in August and has been designed for new full-time students. Orientation sessions include an overview of HCC technology, a campus tour, and student wellness in initiatives. All other student types will be assisted by our office with the registration process. So we know that registering for classes during this difficult time can seem overwhelming. So please know that we'll be available to assist you with an online appointment or even by email. Reach out to us at admissions at harper.edu with any questions or even sign up for a Microsoft Teams online meeting at harford.edu slash admissions. Great, thank you so much, Jen. We appreciate it. We will come back to Jen later on. Uh, as a reminder, we do have a question area on the right-hand side. So I've seen some questions starting to come through. So as we go through the presentation, please feel free to add your questions into that box and we will address them at the end of the press at the end of the presentations, I'm sorry, during our question and answer panel time. So next I'm going to pass it over to Suzanne Gallahue, who is our assistant director for financial aid, and she's going to start going over the financial aid office and the processes that they have. Suzanne, I'm going to pass it to you. There we go. Okay, well, welcome. And I am going to go over some things that we went over in our first session about the FAFSA. So I apologize if some of this is a repeat, but it honestly doesn't hurt to hear it too many times when um, it's something that's new to you. Um, so this is just a checklist of things you need to do to get your aid processed at Harford Community College. And of course, the first thing to do this is to do the FATSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. It must be electronically submitted each year, um, and you can use our school code, which is 002075, to get your FATSA to be directed to us. Um, a parent, if you're a dependent student, must also sign the FATSA. Um, and the most important thing to do when completing the FAFSA is first to get your federal student ID. Um, and that is an ID that you will keep your whole time in college. Your parents will have one or your parent or parents will have one and you will have one as a student. So um, you can go to studentaid.gov to complete your FAFSA. And there are also tutorials on that page if you have questions and we are always available in the financial aid office for questions as well. So the next thing you need to do is if you are selected for verification, which happens sometimes, you need to provide the documents. And the way that we communicate whether you are selected for verification is we send you an email tell you, telling you that you have missing information. And we direct you to your Alnet accounts where you can see what documents are missing. And most of them you can click on and the document will pop up and you can complete it. 
and then send it to us via email since we are not in the office or fax it as well. That will also come to us directly. Uh, the next thing you need to do, or it's not necessarily in this order, but another thing that you have to do is you have to declare major. We cannot give financial aid unless you're enrolled in a degree-seeking program. Um, one really important thing, and the deadline is almost here, is applying for scholarships. So the scholarship deadline for Harford Community College is May 15th. And it is quite easy to apply for our scholarships. We have over 100 some scholarships. And you don't have to apply for each one individually. You just need to go to your Alnet account, your All About Me tab, click on the scholarship link on the right hand side, and it will then link you to another page where you'll put in your HCC identifying information. And then you will often be asked to upload a short narrative, maybe some references, and then the system will look at all the possible scholarships that you qualify for. So some of them have GPA requirements, some of them have major requirements, some of them have requirements that you had to have graduated from a certain high school in order to get it. Um, so just don't worry, you don't need to apply for each one individually. We will run the system and, and we will match you to the ones that you qualify for. Another thing that's very important is applying for Maryland state aid. Now, a little bit disappointing is that the deadline for Maryland state aid was March 1st. So it's maybe too late for this year for most aid, but if you are coming to school next year and you are going to be attending HCC or a school in Maryland, make sure you get your FAFSA in as soon as you can after October 1st to meet the March 1st deadline, because there is a lot of state financial aid that's available to students. One type of aid that may or may not all be gone and often doesn't require the March 1st deadline is senatorial and delegates scholarships. And basically the way to get one of those is first to just contact your delegates and your, and your senator and find out what their process is. As I said, they might have already given all the money away at this time since it's already May, but because of the pandemic, maybe they're a little bit slower to give it away. It doesn't hurt to try to get money from your senator and your delegates. And if you don't get it this year, you can try next year. And usually what they do is make you write a short essay and submit it to their office and they will award you anywhere from, I've seen from $250, I've seen up to $10,000, even at Harford. So, but typically it's around $250, $500, $1,000 that your senator and your delegates can offer you. So that's really important. Another thing to consider is work study. So if you have need based on your FAFSA, you could qualify for federal work study. And that is where you get a job on campus and you earn the income and you get to keep that income. And you work typically about 20 hours a week. And it could be any sort of job. Um, the athletics has jobs. We have jobs in financial aid. There's jobs outside of the college at the Y and Boys and Girls Club. So the best thing to do is if you're interested is to contact the financial aid office, get on the list for, for federal work study, and then we'll also give you what jobs might be available um, in, at the college. So if you are awarded financial aid after we've reviewed your FAFSA, reviewed verification documents if needed, if you are awarded financial aid, in the past, we used to send you an actual paper letter, but of course, now this year, we are going to send that via email and we are going to instruct you to go to your Alnet account and review what type of aid you have gotten. We do not automatically award loans. So some schools, if you've been to another school, will just automatically put a loan on your account. And we don't do that at Harford. And the reason is because we really don't want you to borrow. If you, you can stay out of debt, I mean, we feel happy, you feel happy, and we are such an affordable college that hopefully you will be able to stay out of debt and not have to borrow. Or if you don't have, or if you do have to borrow, you that you don't have to borrow too much. Um, so we don't automatically award loans. We do ask that you request a loan. And so we have loan request forms on our website and on the Alnet All About Me tab, and you can request a loan. And 
it depends on how many years in school you are and how many credits you have, how much you can borrow, but all that information is in the loan request form and on our website. Um, but if you don't want to borrow and you didn't get enough aid, you may need to do some type of other way to pay. And I'm going to have Amy, the Director of Financial Aid, tell you about other ways to pay other than financial aid. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Hi, my name is Amy Spinato, and I'm going to take a few minutes to talk about um, Nelnet, our tuition payment plan. Um, it's an easy program to set up. Um, thank you for displaying that for us. And if you can scroll down a little bit more for me, and we're going to talk about setting up a payment plan. Um, payment plans, um, now you, it, you can sign up. The earlier you sign up, the better. Um, payment plans, um, let's see here. Sign up early. Again, at this point, you can sign up by May 27th, um, put 20% down, and you would have six payments. Um, classes are starting um, August 24th, so that gives you six payments um, to break down the tuition. Um, NUNUT plans are open to all registered credit students who have a balance of more than $300. Um, to sign up, you would need to have a credit card, a debit card, or a bank account for automatic withdrawals. Uh, there is a small fee. Uh, I believe it's about $35 per semester um, for processing. Um, you would need to actually sign up prior to the semester finishing. Um, the semester ends in December, but you would need to sign up for that payment plan, I think, by um, October 27th. So uh, again, you are responsible for a down payment. So the sooner you sign up, the smaller the down payment and the down payments you know, are processed um, immediately. So on our site, um, you can see there is a video tutorial. Um, there is actually on the site, if you would actually need additional assistance, um, there is contact information um, for Nelnet. We do have a link um, for mycollegepaymentplan.com Harford. Um, there is contact information or contact email for the cashier's office, which is cashiers at harford.edu. The payment plan isn't handled by the financial aid office, but we work very closely with the, the cashier's office. And again, um, what happens once the financial aid is processed at a certain point, you need to know what sort of um, balance you need to cover in order to set up that amount for your payment plan. Uh, bills are due on July 20th. Um, in regards to your financial aid, um, we will be sending out awards or financial aid offers in the next couple of weeks. So um, if you were at the earlier presentation today, um, we did take a survey um, and we had about less than half of the participants who have actually completed the FAFSA and Suzanne talked about that a little bit earlier. Um, we would need you, if you're going to be attending for the fall, to complete the 2020-2021 FAFSA. So there still is time. Still is time for you to do that FAFSA and to receive a financial aid offer so that um, we can get that out to you. So you can get an idea of what you may qualify for. Um, bills being due um, July 20th and plenty of time to get you set up for a payment plan. Um, if you decide um, you, know, you don't have an interest in taking out student loans, but again, there are plenty of other options with applying for scholarships with that May 15th um, date for applying for award spring. So there still is opportunities for applying for scholarships. Um, again, if you have any eligibility for um, veterans benefits or if you're dependent of a veteran, again, we do have a veterans office um, available on campus or remotely um, that would be able to provide assistance for you as well. So again, if you have questions for us, um, I believe that we're going to be able to answer some of those. We do have uh, email address finaid at harford.edu and then we have a veterans at harford.edu and I'm going to actually pass it over. Great, thank you so much Amy and thank you to Suzanne as well. Um, so those are the presentations that we have for you this evening. We are now going to roll into our question and answer panel time. If you thought of any questions and you didn't get a chance to ask them yet, there is still time. That question area should be on the right-hand side of your screen. 
feel free to type in a question and we will get to it as soon as we can. So just to introduce our panel that we have today, from admissions, we will have our assistant director for admissions, Jen Starkey, back, who presented earlier. We also have Alex Rogers, one of our admissions specialists, and Jeannie Goss, who's an academic advisor for the admissions office. For financial aid, we have the director for financial aid, Amy Spinato, who was the last one that just spoke. We have Suzanne Gallahue, who is our assistant director for financial aid, who spoke a little earlier. And we also have Christian Ritchie, who is one of our financial aid specialists. So there are a lot of people here to be able to answer your questions. So as I said, feel free to throw those questions in the question box so we can answer them for you. I'm going to start by bringing up Alex. Alex, are you available? Yes, I am. All righty, Alex, you have the first question of the session. Would the guidance counselor at the high school have the tuition waiver information for dual enrollment if it was approved? So I'm actually not 100% positive on this one. I actually, my understanding is that it comes um, from HCPS more broadly. Um, I don't know that they actually have access to that. I'm sure that they have contacts that can say, hey, you know, this needs to be resent. Um, but I believe that it's a, um, comes from a more central HCPS um, uh, division. Okay, great. So the student could use their guidance office as, or as their school counseling office as a first step in order to figure out where that form comes from, correct? Yeah, yeah, you would, you could uh, definitely stay in touch with your guidance counselor and they would know who to touch base with to make sure if you need a recent or trying to figure out why it wasn't accepted, those types of issues. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Alrighty, Jeannie, I'm going to call on you next, Jeannie Goss. The question is, I went to Harvard Community College a few years ago. Do I still need to attend a student orientation? Um, it's not required that you would attend the new student orientation. I mean, it's certainly available to you if you'd like to come and just see if anything has changed since you have attended last. You know, buildings have changed perhaps. Um, you know, just some of the different student activities and, and things like that. So that would really be a preference. There's also um, an online orientation that we offer each year too, if you feel, you know, that you want to kind of get any updates, but you don't necessarily want to go through the campus tours and things like that. We do have an online option. Great. Thank you. We had a question just come in and I will address this question. Um, has there been any information about the issue of not having classes in the fall due to the situation that is occurring now? What are the chances of only online classes? As of right now, there has been no decision for the fall semester. We have made a decision for the summer semester though. So all summer classes are online only. The campus will not be open for any courses. But as of right now, we have not made a decision for fall. Please feel free to keep checking our website. Once we have more information, we will be sharing that with students and everyone who visits our website. So I'm sorry we don't have an answer for you at the moment, but you know we're waiting for the information from the governor and any information regarding the COVID-19 situation to make sure that we can make the best decision to keep all of our students and faculty and staff safe. So more on that to come, um, but summer has been determined. Summer will be online courses only. All right, for our next question, I'm gonna pull up Jen Starkey. Jen, are you available? Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm available. All righty. The question is, I have applied and I've set up my Alnet account, but I'm still receiving a message that my account has a hold when I try to register. Why is that? So like I was discussing earlier, especially for degree seeking students, um, when a student applies to the college, we may place an additional hold on the student's account. And for degree seeking students, that would be a new student hold. And what that makes sure of is that you are going to meet with an academic advisor prior to registering so that you are on track to graduate. So in order to take that off, contact admissions at harford.edu. If you know your student ID number, include that in the email. If not, just go ahead and add your full name and your date of birth so we can verify your account. We'll double check as to what type of student you are. So again, if you're a new student, we'll make sure you have your high school transcripts 
as well as your test scores on file. Or if you're transferring in, we'll double check that we have your uh, college transcript on file so that you're ready to meet with an academic advisor. And we'll also assist you in that process of scheduling and you know, uh, helping you schedule that appointment with academic advising so that you can actually register for your classes at that point. Okay, great, thank you. So please feel free to keep throwing those questions into the question box. What I want to do now is since our campus is closed, it might be really hard to get a good feel of what Harper Community College looks like. So we actually have a virtual tour available. Um, so I'm gonna actually pass it off to Cynthia Courtney in our marketing department to be able to show the virtual tour to allow all of you to see what Hartford is like. Cynthia, I'm gonna pass it to you. Kelly, I think you got to move the, um, switch it to me so I can show my screen, please. Thank you. Hey everybody, my name is Kevin. I'm a Hartford Community College graduate and part-time employee, and I thought I'd give you guys a quick tour of the campus. Before we get started, I want to add that I'm going to give a description of what typically happens in each building, but it's not uncommon to have classes around campus. That said, everything is within walking distance and parking is always available. So let's get started. We'll start at the intersection of Route 22 and Thomas Run Road. As you can see from this map, which will be used throughout the video, there are seven entrances to campus. One of these entrances is located off Route 22 near the Wawa. The other six are off Thomas Run Road, where we're heading now. After passing the athletic fields and going through entrance one, you will come to the APG Federal Credit Union Arena. It's home to the Fighting Owls basketball and volleyball teams and hosts concerts, events, and competitions throughout the year. Attached to it is the Susquehanna Center, which houses the pool, fitness center, and cycling studio, as well as the gymnasium. Next, we have the Chesapeake Center, which has an auditorium that seats more than 200 and a ballroom with equal capacity. The rest of the building is broken into offices for human resources, communications, and dining services departments. Moving on, we come to Darlington Hall, home of the nursing and allied health programs. Built in 2014, it features simulation labs, a functioning ambulance bay, and state-of-the-art classrooms and equipment for our nursing, paramedic, and other allied health students. Next, you come to the roundabout and entrance three, the main entrance to Harper Community College. Passing through the gates, you'll see Edgewood Hall on the right. Edgewood Hall houses the workforce development and apprenticeship programs, the Harford County Sheriff's Academy, and offices for continuing education programs. Edgewood Hall also has a fully operational kitchen that is used for food safety and culinary classes. As we move past Edgewood Hall and down Cross Campus Drive, we come to a recently renovated Boston Hall. The renovation included a new GIS lab and criminal justice lab along with updated classrooms and technology. The rest of Boston Hall is typically used for classes in psychology, sociology, and other behavioral and social sciences. Coming into the heart of campus, we reach the library. The library has online and in-person research assistance, private study rooms, print stations, and technology rentals. Located on the first floor are the One Button Studio, where students can create videos and participate in digital media workshops, and the Learning Center, which provides course tutoring and learning strategies. To the left of the library, we come to the Public Safety Building. Public safety officers monitor the campus day and night year-round. They're always walking the campus, are quick to offer help, and are very friendly. Moving down the path, we approach Aberdeen Hall. This is where most science, engineering, and technology classes will take place. With multiple laboratory classrooms, students are able to learn hands-on with different materials. Aberdeen Hall is connected by a glass hallway that allows the original building to merge into the newer portion. Now we are going to turn around and look back at the quad and then turn towards Bel Air Hall, which typically holds classes in business, languages, history, and other studies. The building is primarily made into classrooms and a few offices and can be entered from the quad and the parking lot on the opposite end. Next to Bel Air Hall, we have Haverty Grace, which is primarily made of classrooms and faculty spaces, 
While the building is two floors, it is the smallest on campus and has multiple places to relax in between classes. Moving from Haverty Grace Hall, we come to the Student Center. The Student Center is the hub of campus where you'll meet with your advisor and register for classes. This is also where you can find the cashier's office, Office of Student Life, and the Globe Cafe. The Globe has a large menu and plenty of healthy options. The Student Center is always busy and makes a good place to hang out in between classes. Around the corner is Maryland Hall, which finished renovations in the fall of 2019. While Maryland Hall now holds the testing center, the rest of the building is made up of offices for faculty and staff. Before we head over to Joppa Hall, I want to take us back through campus to give a little more perspective of Hartford Community College. As we come down Cross Campus Drive from the opposite direction, we can see Bel Air Hall on the hill and Aberdeen Hall closer to us, with the glass walkway connecting the other part of the building. You can see parking on the right, and then we're back to the library. From the middle of campus, there are a few ways to get to Joppa Hall. You can easily walk the sidewalks or by taking the path, which is right here to the right. You can also walk or drive this way towards Joppa Hall, but for the sake of the video, we're going to stay on Cross Campus Drive and Thomas Run Road. After going through the roundabout and entering back in through entrance four, we come to Joppa Hall. Joppa Hall is home to the arts, mass comm, music, and theater studies, and also has a complete cybersecurity and graphic design labs. Joppa Hall is also home to the WHFC College Radio Station, as well as featuring an outdoor art collection area, featuring student and faculty pieces. Before we finish up, I want to show everyone the Tune Bill. Tune stands for Towson University of Northeastern Maryland. The building is located on Hartford Community College property, but offers Towson University classes, which makes it easy for students to transfer and stay in the area. The Tune Building is located directly across from Joppa Hall and can be accessed from Thomas Run Road from entrance south. So that's it guys. I hope you're able to get a feel for the college. Be safe and hopefully I'll see you on campus soon. Thank you so much for sharing that, Cynthia. We got a few more questions in, so I just want to keep moving along with our Q&As. So I'm going to ask Alex the next question. Alex, in talking about test scores that are required for new students, is the easiest way to obtain them is by calling the high school guidance office? Um, so it depends on what tests you're talking uh, or speaking about. So SAT scores, um, ideally you would log on to um, College Board and from there you could obtain your a PDF download or a screenshot where the score, your name and the test date clearly visible and you send that to admissions and then request an official report uh, to be sent from College Board. In, in terms of park scores, however, yes, your guidance counselor is absolutely the uh, person to chat with. Great, thank you. Jeannie, I have a question for you. If my son is going to do part-time attendance, half-time at the high school and half-time taking some college credit, not for graduation, what is the application process? So it's gonna be the same um, for any duly enrolled student. You're still gonna to have to do the online application at this point and indicate that you would be a duly enrolled student. Um, we would want to see your high school transcripts. Um, if you or he or she has taken the SATs, um, you can also send the, that information, PARC or ACT scores as well. Um, but your, your son or daughter will just work with the admissions department um, to register for the classes that they are going to want to take. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Jen, I have a question for you. If I attended Harford three years ago, do I need to reapply? 
So yes, so that actually falls into the category of a readmit student. So if you have attended HCC previously, um, we do suggest that you go ahead and submit another an application as a readmit student. This is going to do a few things for us. It's going to, one, let us know that you're ready to register for classes. It's going to make sure that your accounts are up to date as well. And it gives you an opportunity when you're um, submitting the application to uh, submit a new major, submit a new address, new telephone number. So it's a way just for us to get more um, up to date information on you and for your academic goals at this time. Great. Thank you. I'm going to go to Amy, our Director for Financial Aid. Amy, are there any events or outreach that Financial Aid does to help students? We have a number of Financial Aid outreach events. We generally hold them during the fall and spring semesters. Uh, we have events that talk about um, how to um, maintain um, good credit. We do events on how to complete the FAFSA how to um, secure or what, what federal work study is, how to maintain good satisfactory academic progress. Um, we, um, the scholarship process, how to apply for Maryland state scholarships. We are planning, um, this would be new, to actually try a summer event, especially with um, the remote learning environment, to try to do something virtually um, for the summer um, regarding financial literacy. And um, new this year as well, uh, I think we're going to try something virtually after we, after the students um, apply for FAFSA and after they receive their financial aid offers, um, once they've been applied and accept, um, um, once they apply and are accepted and do the FAFSA, um, we're thinking of doing an event where we can actually walk students through um, their financial aid award offer to explain that to them. That's awesome, great, thank you. Alex, I'm going to go back to you. I work full time. I'm assuming Harford offers evening, online, and weekend classes. Is that correct? Or is there only daytime classes? Are you there, Alex? Okay, we may have lost Alex. I'm going to jump to Jeannie. Jeannie, are you there? Okay, did you hear the question or would you like me I to did. repeat it? No, okay. I heard it and um, we do offer classes at various times throughout the day and the week. So a lot of the classes um, are offered in the daytime, afternoon and evening courses. We also have courses that are offered on Saturdays. Um, we have traditional, you know, 100% in the classroom classes. We also have online classes and we have hybrid classes. So we really try to take the classes and offer an option that's going to be good for everyone. Um, and the course schedule is available online. So you can really go through and see, okay, these are all of the types of classes that Harvard Community College is offering. And then you can see the sections and the times for the sections uh, for the fall and summer semesters at this point. Great, and as a follow-up, Jeannie, can you explain what a hybrid class is? A hybrid class is when you meet in the class and you have something online. So a lot of times maybe the class will meet once a week and then you would have some online assignments to do um, so that you're not coming to campus two or three or more times during the week. So it really, you know, helps to make it convenient and get the best of both worlds. Um, you know, that face-to-face -face connection with the teachers and with your classmates, but also a little bit of that flexibility in the online environment. Great, thank you. Jen, I'm going to come to you. A question came in. I forgot my Alnet login. Is there a way that I can retrieve it? Yes. So if you send us, or I'm sorry, if you send us an email to admissions at harford.edu, make sure that you include your full name and date of birth so we can verify your account. And that way we'll be able to send you any missing information or if you got your acceptance letter, but you may have misplaced it, let us know what you need. We can send you your student ID number, as well as your email address, which is also your username in order to get into your Outnet account. Great, thank you. 
Let's see, Alex, are you back yet? I'm not sure if you have connection. I am here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, question for you. Am I able to register for the fall semester yet? Uh, registration is open, um, but of course, as has been mentioned, um, if you have a new student in advising hold, you do have to either speak with admissions or with advising, depending where you are in the process. But yes, registration has opened for the fall and students have been registering. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Jeannie, question for you. What if I have a qualifying score in English for my SATs, but not for math? Can I just take the AccuPlacer for math? Absolutely. So you're going to want to send the test scores for the English, um, whether that's SAT or PARC, um, ACT, whatever it may be. Make sure you send us those scores so that we can update your student record accordingly. But then you would just need to take the AccuPlacer for the math section. And when you sign up to take it, you're going to um, sign up just for that math component. So you don't need to take everything. Great. Thank you. Jen, I'm gonna come back to you. Do I have to get an associate's at Harford or can I just take a few classes and transfer them? Sure, actually, you don't necessarily need to get an associate's with us. Um, we've had plenty of students that have actually started at Harford and then have transferred on to their preferred college or university after a semester or two with us. Um, this time of year, I feel like we get a lot of students that may come to HCC just for the summer and they just graduated from high school and they just kind of want to get a head start maybe on some of their classes at their home college or university for the fall, even before they start attending there. Um, so that's one you know, instance that I've seen um, with students. I've also um, assisted some students that have completed um, the necessary requirements that are needed for another college or university before they even receive an associate's degree with us. So yes, absolutely, we'll make it work for whatever works best for you, whether it's just getting a couple of credits out of the way with us or completing an associate's degree. Great, thank you. Suzanne, I'm gonna come to you if you are available. The question is, is it too late to apply for scholarships? Okay, am I there? I'm awfully small in my corner. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, no, it's not too late. The deadline is next week, May 15th. So you just need to go onto your Outnet account, All About Me tab, and select um, Apply for Scholarships on the right hand side. And we will award those within the next month or so after that. And sometimes the scholarships that are offered in the fall don't get awarded so they're then available in the spring so then we have another deadline which is november 15th for the spring scholarship so yep it's not too late great thank you mm -hmm. Jeannie, i'm going to come to you um i have a question regarding the nursing program our selective nursing program um what would be the path for the students if they don't have any credits yet how would they go about following through our curriculum to become a nurse? So you're going to first apply, um, and when you're talking with your admissions specialist, we can provide you with information as far as what those prerequisite courses are, are, are so that you can you know, work on starting them and then applying to the nursing program. So we do have a nursing prep, um, major or you could select general studies really you know as long as we know that you are working on those nursing classes then we are going to start on you know how are we going to get you through taking these prerequisite courses in the quickest way so that you're able to apply to the nursing program okay great and a follow-up to that does the nursing program award an associate's degree yes would be an associate of science in nursing and then you would be able to sit um, for your RN licensure exam. Great, thank you. All right, I think those are all the questions that we have. I don't see any more coming in. Um, so at this point, I wanna pass it over to Patrick Elliott, who is our associate VP for enrollment management. Patrick, it's all yours. 
Thank you, Kelly. Um, uh, everyone, I, we just wanted to wrap up today uh, and thank you for your attendance. Uh, before I get into my closing remarks, uh, I would like to take a moment of privilege just to thank everybody who has made uh, this virtual open house possible. Uh, we very much wanted to be with you this week on campus for our uh, traditional spring information night, um, but the circumstances didn't allow that. And uh, I just want to thank specifically the admissions team, the communication and marketing team, the academic affairs team, and the faculty who have all participated. And we brought you over 10 hours of uh, sessions in the last four days. Uh, so when you think about it, you know, we really have expanded what was typically a two and a half hour event to, you know, over four nights. And, and that was because of all the hard work of all my colleagues at Hartford Community College. So thank you all very much for putting on a very useful series. To all of you who have tuned in, whether this is your first session or your 10th session, we do appreciate your time and in, in, in learning about Hartford Community College and getting your questions um, answered. Before we wrap up, I do want to take one last poll. I'm going to go ahead and launch that now. And I just want to know, what are your plans uh, for the next year? Do you plan to come to Harvard Community College? Do you plan to go elsewhere? Or are you still deciding? Uh, that will be helpful for us to know how we can continue to bring you important content and how we can help you make that decision. So I'll leave this open just for another minute or another couple of seconds. Uh, but it looks like so far most of the respondents do plan to attend Hartford Community College. And we're, we're glad that you have selected us. We know that you have lots of choices. And my promise to you is that we will work with you to make sure you have a very successful uh, academic journey. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll now. I'll share those results. Um, but it looks like everyone who responded to the poll uh, does plan on attending Hartford Community College next year. Um, just a few uh, housekeeping items. Uh, this session was sponsored by the admissions team at Hartford Community College, uh, and their email address is admissions at hartford.edu. You can also go to our website, hartford.edu, uh, and uh, slash learn more to see some of the information that we shared with you this week. We will also put videos of these sessions on there so you can come back and refer to them. Uh, and use that as a resource. Um, lastly, um, when you leave this session, you will get a, a, a survey reminder. Uh, and if you don't fill it out, the GoToWebinar system will send you a reminder, I think, in a day. Um, please take a few seconds and fill out um, this. Please take a few seconds and fill out the survey to let us know how we're doing. It's just six questions. Uh, and we really want to use that information to understand uh, how we did this week and how we might improve our content for you in the future. Um, I think that is it. Um, I will take a pause to see if Kelly, Courtney, Evo, or Jennifer have anything that they would like to say before we end the webinar. But if not, thank you again for your time. We pride ourselves at Hartford Community College uh, at being a comprehensive, high quality college where we can provide personal assistance and service to our students. So hopefully you'll find that with us. Um, you are in great hands with the admissions team and, and the other colleagues that you've heard from this week. But if there's ever anything that you need that you can't get elsewhere, please do let, you, let me know how I can help you. My name is Patrick Elliott and my email address is P A E L L. IOTT at Harford.edu. Thank you for your time. We hope you enjoyed yourself and you learned a lot. If you submitted questions that we have not answered, we will uh, we have those logged and we will follow up with you. Um, and do reach out to us if there's anything else we can do to help you transition to your time with us next year. I think that's it. Have a great day. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we look forward to seeing you on campus very soon. Thank you.